Hi, in this video I will introduce capacitors and capacitance. In a previous video I described how an electric field is formed between two parallel plates with a potential difference between them. Let's consider what happens when a potential difference is applied across parallel plates. Electrons cannot pass through the gap between the parallel plates, but the electric field can. This means that the electrons will try to flow from the negative terminal of the battery to the positive terminal of the battery. However, they cannot cross the gap between the parallel plates, so they build up on this plate instead. Similarly, electrons leave the other plate and move towards the positive terminal of the battery. This leaves one plate with a net positive charge and one plate with a net negative charge. If we now disconnect the battery, the electrons have nowhere to flow, so they stay on this plate. There is a potential difference between these plates due to a build-up of charge, so energy is stored. This is a capacitor. Capacitance is a measure of how much charge can be stored in a capacitor per unit potential difference. It is a property of a capacitor measured in coulombs per volt or farads. The farad is a very large unit, so we'll usually use micro, nano or even pico farads. A microfarad capacitor can store one microcoulomb of charge for every volt that is applied across it. Increasing the potential difference across the capacitor will increase the charge that it can store. Capacitance can be calculated by dividing the stored charge, Q, by the potential difference across the capacitor, V. Note that you need to be really careful here to remember that charge has the symbol Q, but the unit for charge is the coulomb with symbol C, whereas capacitance has the symbol C and the unit F. Now let's consider the structure of a capacitor a little more. We have two conductive plates separated by an insulating material. This could be air, and this is known as a dielectric. What factors would affect the capacitance of this capacitor? Well, larger plates can hold more electrons, so the area of the parallel plates must be proportional to the capacitance. What would affect the strength of the electric field between the plates? Well, we know that the electric field strength between parallel plates is inversely proportional to the separation of the plates. So therefore, the capacitance must also be inversely proportional to this separation. The other factor that will affect the electric field strength is the permittivity of the dielectric material between the plates. You may remember from my video on electric fields that permittivity is the ability of an electric field to propagate through a dielectric. If the gap between the plates is a vacuum, we simply use the permittivity of free space, epsilon zero, which has a value of 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12. However, if it's not a vacuum, we must multiply by a relative permittivity, which we call epsilon r. And this will determine the overall permittivity of the material. Air has a relative permittivity of 1.0006. So we can usually just use the permittivity of free space when we're dealing with air. However, other materials have much higher relative permittivities, such as polythene, which has got a relative permittivity of 2.1. Note that a high relative permittivity here is a good thing. It increases the strength of our electric field and allows our capacitor to store more energy. So pulling together all of these values gives us an overall equation for the capacitance of a capacitor as C is equal to A, the cross-sectional area of the capacitor's plates, multiplied by the permittivity, so that's the relative permittivity, multiplied by the permittivity of free space, divided by the separation of the plates, D. So adding a dielectric material with a high relative permittivity increases the capacitance of our capacitor. But how does this work? Consider a molecule in the dielectric material placed in this electric field. The electric field will polarise the molecules, pulling their electrons towards the positive plate. This means that the dielectric molecules are now aligned in such a way that they actually increase the capacitance. The positive sides of the polarised dielectric molecules will attract more electrons flowing from the battery onto the negative plate 
and the negative side of the polarized dielectric molecules will help to push electrons back to the battery from the positive plate. Finally, let's consider how much energy is stored in a charged capacitor. If we plot a graph of potential difference against charge, the area of the graph, that is voltage multiplied by charge, is equal to the energy stored by the capacitor. The more charge stored, or the higher the potential difference, the energy per unit charge, the more energy we store. The area under this linear graph is equal to half times charge multiplied by voltage. If we substitute C equals Q over V into this equation, this gives us a couple of alternative forms. So E equals half C V squared, or E is equal to half Q squared divided by C.